If you've ever hunted a mature buck, you know the terms cat and mouse game. Back and forth, back and forth. When you're there, he isn't. When you're not there, he is. It's a chess match. But our love and compassion for these animals is what keeps driving us. We have all heard and come to know the phrase, God has a plan for us. Sometimes we win the battles, and more times than not, we lose the battles. But no matter what, we will never lose that drive to find the next deer. This is the story of Mo. All right, guys. Well, we are headed to Atlanta. I grew up in these areas for 24 years. We're going to go try and give it our best. And if you saw my Onyx map right now, I showed Charlie. I've literally probably got like 100 pins dropped. I mean, it's, it's thick. It's kind of nuts. It's We're not going to hit all of them. We're just going to go door knock and see if we can't get permission to go hunt some of these areas. We might get zero. We might get one. We might get all of them. And y'all best not be in the comments talking about some, y'all are just trying to copy seek one. There's probably going to be some comments about y'all are or just trying to be like seek one or mimic seek one or whatever bro if you hunted where i hunted and where he hunted we ain't got no deer to talk about we got nothing at the moment at the moment we ain't got nothing and we're branching out so if you hate it i'm sorry if you're for it thank you to pull into my old childhood home for my friends that watch this you guys know exactly where that place is at go talk to the new owners are you nervous i mean dude i really wasn't nervous because i know what i want to say to them Get hey my tree stand's still in the tree here by the way it's been here for five years so it's probably sucked into the tree <laughs> they're actually outside here goes nothing we got permission Dude, this place, I grew up here for 24 years. This is nuts. He's like, I never ever let anybody hunt here, but you guys can hunt here. And he gave us a freaking golf cart to use. Yeah, he's like, as long as it's just y'all, y'all can hunt here. Let us use this golf cart. I get to hunt my childhood home I grew up on. So this is uh, pretty special. Pretty sweet. Let's go find us a big deer. Yeah, we got, a, we got a lot of stuff I mean, to do. We got a score now. We got it. Matt. Nah. It's not a no, but he's got to get in contact with the gentleman who he gave permission three years ago to hunt. And if that guy says, hey, I'm not going to come out here and hunt anymore, we got it. So a couple years ago, he saw a really big one. He said he only saw him once. He said he was about a 10 or 12 point. He said every night there's a bunch of does and like little bucks out there, but he hadn't seen anything big yet this year. We could be feeding. We'd probably get something to come in. I thought I had it, bro. He was like, you know, I ain't really been seeing deer in the yard or anything here lately. There used to be a lot of big bucks in the area. He never really got to the point of if he wanted us to hunt it or not. And he said they had a coyote problem. I told him I'd help him with that too. Like anything we can do. If you need any help with the house or something, like we'll help any, we'll do anything we can. And he was like, well, I'm gonna have to say no. And I was like, dude, we just had the greatest talk in the world. <laughs> You're gonna let me bramble on, but he said no. Oh, well. Bucks, 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 Three of them. I'm telling you, man, these people are just way too protective of their deer. I don't see no bucks. It's a buck right there. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, this person's definitely going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Today is August 10th. Got permission on this this little block of land right here. It's actually in a full-blown neighborhood. Some of these guys said that they've been seeing some bucks in their backyard, so I've got written permission. We're about to go see if we can't find what these bucks are, see what they are, get pictures of them. We got a freaking feast for these guys. We got a feast for these deer. Got all that feed out. Picked out a couple trees, but probably that'll change because I want my wind blowing back this way. Hopefully, we can get a picture of a big deer. We're going to head back to the house. We got two-hour drive and hopefully get some pictures tonight. All right, guys. Let me restart that. Cut. Wow. We got some bucks. Actually showed up this morning. We are actually T minus two weeks until Georgia season opener. Me and Charlie are kind of being a little last minute, as we always are. And we're getting the saddle platform hung, these sticks hung, because if these bucks do what they did last week, I could have killed them. They daylighted in the evening and in the morning, and then this morning they showed up right before daylight. We got a two hour drive onwards.
Dude, you know what we left? What? We left the dang pole saw. I didn't bring the pole saw. I had two trees picked out. We'd have to trim. I got a trim some of them limbs right there. But predominant wind is blowing. When it comes out of the north, northwest is blowing straight back that way. I don't want it blowing south. South is horrible. I don't know. Straight that way is awful. And there's a house literally right there. I know. I told you. I'm, there's one, two, three, four, five houses. And they're funneling right in between these two houses. And then they're dropping down. And then when they came up this morning, they came from somewhere right here and came straight up. Which this is the neighbor that we need to get, we really need to ask for permission. But I don't want to lose this spot. I'm like, I, I, the deer are coming in here. I don't want to start asking around and then potentially lose this one because I'm asking around. Oh, the suburb game, how fun it is. Yeah, I and mean, you see, I'm literally got five, I've got six houses right here in the span of 100 yards. Yeah. I think that's the tree we kill them on, right here. All right, I need to get on your shoulder so we can trim these trees. Wow. Well guys, uh, well, crap. We got those sets on today in Atlanta, out here shooting the bow. Really, we don't know what the opening weekend's gonna gonna bring us, because we got these bucks showing up in Atlanta. We got Ford Slash there at Griffins. We got a couple other bucks there at Griffins that we want to go after. We really don't know. I mean, Charlie's got some deer. We, we don't know what we're going to do. We just have to keep playing. See what these tactic cams tell us. That's really the biggest thing, these tactic cams, man. They're Amen. gonna tell us where we need to be. Amen. If we shoot like this right here, any of these, any of these deer are gonna be swag, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's a car about to drive by, but. <clears throat> <laughs> this morning, boom, they showed up right. As I rudely keep getting interrupted. If these deer can just stay on their patterns, man, we can we can be there open a weekend. We are T minus two weeks. We're shooting dub next weekend, September 14th. We're going to be in a tree stand somewhere. Coming to you guys. All right, guys, well, we headed up north here to Ohio, kind of got away from the hurricane, got away from everything. And I told Charlie yesterday, I was like, we're gonna be up here in Ohio and my deer in Atlanta is gonna daylight. And what do you know? I don't know, Charlie, if you can see this. He's standing in front of my stand right now. It's like 9.30, chilling, freaking just chilling right there. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we can swack early up here and get back to Atlanta. Well, we just left Ohio. It is Tuesday. What, yeah, October 1st. Mo has daylighted three out of the four days that we have been here. Weather's supposed to be good there in Atlanta. Avery's bucks have daylighted. I'm probably gonna go hunt for Mo. Charlie's gonna go with Avery. So we're in Kentucky right now. We've got, I think, six hours left till home. We're gonna be at a tree stand tonight and we put them down and get some good content for all you fine folks out there. Dude, I am literally shaking right now, and I shouldn't be. Came to hunt after Mo tonight, and I realized that the neighbors were home. And I think the neighbor's lot is a huge key in where this deer is coming from. Last night, Mo was at my spot 20 minutes after I got out of the tree stand. He's coming off the top of this oak hill, and then he's coming to my feet. The reason I'm shaking, 
just went and talked to the neighbors. I've door knocked before, never gotten this shaken up. Door knocked before, no problems, no issues. And it's not even a giant deer, but it's literally driving me crazy. And so I was so nervous because I knew that I needed to land this spot. Went and talked to the people, got their number, landed permission. So me and Charlie are probably gonna go put a camera out here tomorrow. I'm gonna go hunt in the spot that I do have for right now for Mo, where he was, he's been in here like clockwork. It's just been after dark or before daylight. Spartan Forward says it's still normal patterns, normal movement. If he would just slip up, we can get him here tonight, it'd be awesome. If not, just landed another key piece of the puzzle on Mo. so. Me, well, I'm a gazelle, always running. Adrenaline, every blood set. Some I really kicked myself yesterday. Didn't come in here. Now what do you know it? Freaking Mo came in here the earliest he's ever come in here. It's like 6.40, standing right here, 20 yards. Could have freaking smoked him. I don't even know, man. This is. It's heartbreaking. We're still in the ball game. He's still in the area. Only problem is, is we have to leave this morning. Head back home to Alabama. And Charlie's got to head back down south. So, like I said, this week. But this upcoming week, temperatures are going to drop down into the high 40s. Towards the end of the week, and I'll, I should be here. So I did get a camera out on this piece of permission that I got. I already had some does find the screen. I have not seen Mo come across it yet, but it's only been out for a day. Next time he shows up like that, I'm gonna be here. I promise you that. Back at the spot for Mo. I'm gonna go dress up this mock screen. I don't even know where to start to be honest with you. Basically, I've gotten wind that there are other hunters in the area. There are other hunters moving into the area. These suburban areas, these deer can, you know, find these little pockets of woods and travel through these neighborhoods however they like. But last two nights, Mo has been over half a mile from here. He hasn't been on this spot in two days. The place where he's at right now, I don't have permission, so gonna go freshen this scrape up try to piss him off keep him around here temps are down in the high 40s this weekend next week they're gonna be in the 30s ruts right around the corner i know this spot is heavy 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 with does i just need to get in there and piss them off and see if we can get a shot at them suburban hunting at its finest. I'm trying to get the tree stand on this thing. Does right here. There's deer everywhere right here. It's like 4 30. There's deer everywhere. All we need is for Mo to get pissed off just a little bit. I'm trying to get him to daylight. He daylighted when I was in Ohio. And then he daylighted the week that I was here. And I wasn't in the freaking tree stand. We're gonna hunt him hard this weekend. We're gonna hunt all the way through Sunday and then cross our fingers. Hope that Mo comes in. Well guys, this is not how I wanted this story to end. Just got a phone call and the deer that I've been after here in Atlanta, Mo, was shot this morning and killed. But luckily, the dude's cool enough. I've known him from through a friend of a friend uh, for a year or two now. We're gonna go over here, get his story, and at least let y'all see the deer. And um, I guess put a put a close to this chapter we hunted this deer hard we did everything we could the one day i didn't hunt the deer daylighted so i mean he 
could have already have been dead. It's how it goes. It wasn't it wasn't the Lord's will for me to to take this deer. It was uh, it was in His will for for my buddy too. So we're gonna go get his story. At least put my hands on the deer, see the deer. This is how suburban hunting goes. Unfortunately, is people after people, spot after spot. I mean, the person the lot right next to you, somebody could be hunting it, and your deer. It's not your deer, but the deer that you're after can get killed just like that. So. It's part of the game, but happy, happy for him. So let's go get his side of the story and let's go put our hands on Mo. Come here. You wanna hold the deer? Come here, big girl. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, this is my first deer interview, so excuse me if I stumble over myself. So I got permission on this spot about two weeks ago and been super busy. Um, haven't been able to go scout it out or check it out um, this morning. This is the first time I was going to get a chance to get over there. So I uh, I did a lot of scouting on my phone, just virtual scouting, and went over there. Found a spot with a couple shooting lanes and climbed on up. I was planning on just seeing how the deer moved. Uh, I got to see two little small little six points chasing chasing a doe around. Um, that, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Um, it, got, it got about time how to get down and get back home. And uh, so tie, tie my rope on the bow, get ready to let it down. And right before I let it down, I hear a noise behind me. I turn around and not maybe 10 yards behind me, he's standing there looking right at me. I think he sees a string of my, of my bow swinging and it spooks him a little bit. So he hops back about 10 yards and he's facing directly away from me. So I hurry up, get a quiv uh, bow out of my quiver. I get it knocked on, I turn around the other side of the tree, those uh, two little six points, they chased that uh, doe almost in the same spot he was, but they went left. And if he, if he would go left, then I'd, I'd have a shot at him. Um, but if he kept walking the way he was going, he, I wasn't going to have any shot. And the last second, he took two steps slightly uh, angled away from me. Um, I had about a four inch window to shoot through. Um, he was right at 15, 20 yards. And uh, putting on there let him fly he ran uh, he ran straight back probably 20 30 yards I heard a loud crash I thought he was down and I heard another crash and I hear some more rustling and he comes running right back at me and then jumps a fence and I heard a loud crash and a roar and I, I figured he was down um, but wanted to give him some time anyway so climbed down came home real quick um, told my wife she had to go to the grocery store she finally got back I ran out there and uh, he died right, right, right where I thought he did. What you do to me is in confliction, a straight contradiction with my mind. Guilty pleasure has a bit of.